Ocean Gardens was first talked about in the late 70s as a kind of satellite city. Deng Xiaoping was opening the Chinese market and waves of foreigners were settling in Hong Kong, while a few others decamped to a more tranquil place not far away, called Macau. Occupying 20 hectares of seafront, Ocean Gardens was conceived as the first large-scale luxury residential development, with 11 hectares reclaimed from the sea and most of the remaining nine gouged from the hillside. Today, Paul Tse, the man at the wheel of these 3,000 residential units with shopping areas, shares his thoughts in a lengthy interview with Macau Business TV, beginning with the controversy of land deals and the land law. We need to really examine the land management system in Macau uh, to make sure that it's kept up with the times uh, and to make sure that um, everyone's pro property rights are being protected. Um, what is important is that we need to make a distinction um, between um, land transaction uh, which follow the law and the directions and the wishes of the government and those that uh, did not. In some cases, explains Tse, rights were not protected. The problem there was that after the government took over some of the land which had been leased, the government did not have a set of administrative mechanics which allowed the original lessee of the land to have their development rights adequately protected. A case in point, I know that one or two pieces of land which were taken back by the government uh, and on which are now built some of the best hotels in the world, uh, the original lessee was pointed to another piece of land and said that, well, this is what you will get in exchange. Uh, and then, of course, Macau had done very well uh, with the support of China, getting UNESCO to um, um, uh, put in the uh, cultural heritage sites. Um, and, of course, some of the land, which the government then pointed out to the original lessee, uh, and ev everyone then found out that, hey, you can't really build on that land because it is facing certain landmarks, which had to be, the views of which had to be preserved. And therefore, situations like that, with everyone's good intentions at that time, which is to make sure that Macau captures the opportunity to build itself into a world-class tourism and gaming destination, which Macau has done very well. But along the way, there were certain, I shall say, casualties who are, um, up until this point in time, still had not had their cases satisfactorily resolved. Paul Tse reveals a detail that some might have forgotten, a promise still unfulfilled. I was told by several legislators that in the case of the land law, um, it was made very clear during the uh, committee stage back in 2013 that if there were any problems coming, uh, that, that would come up, uh, after an implementation, the administration would take a second look at it to see whether they can put in certain administrative measures to make sure that um, everyone, every, everyone's pro property rights are adequately protected. To the president of the Macau Developers Association, the picture seems clear. Macau has changed a lot in the past decade. Thus, continuing change is in order.